Today we're talking about exams. Now, before I set up my exams, I always start out with my goals. The first goal is for the exam to actually increase learning. Now, that may seem very strange to you, given that I'm actually trying to test how much they've learned, but truly, when you look at midterms and things like that, I'm trying to check and see how much they've learned, where I, as an instructor, have failed, and where I need to refocus some of my efforts to make sure that they gain the knowledge that I expect them to get out of the class. Now, besides just increasing learning, one of my pr primary goals is to make sure that they become competent in the material. So I need to check and make sure that they've learned what they are supposed to do, so that's the grading aspect of it. Besides that, I also like them to understand that the field is broad and that I can inspire them to do additional learning, more curiosity, that there's bigger stuff out there. So I typically try and ask some very thought-provoking questions. Um, and besides that, I want to help them understand how important it is to still, in a very stressful environment, deal with decision making. So my exams tend to be a little extra long and you need to do a little bit of decision making about which problems you do first, which problems you do second, and I feel that that helps build them in general. Now, how does that translate into practice? My primary objective is to make sure that the students understand those core competencies. Every class should have some core competencies and they should have it mastered and understand all those concepts entirely. Therefore, I will ask a few core concept questions and that should be heavily weighted between 50 and 70 percent of the exam. And the idea here is is that it's not a surprise to the students. I let them know as I'm giving a lecture, this is something you need to know if you want to avoid a D or an F. And I will ask homework questions on it and these are things that I want them to have mastery of so when they actually leave the class they might actually remember it for a little while. Now besides that, I also want to ask some research questions or graduate level questions where they have to think about it. They may not actually get the answer and invariably every time I give an exam, somebody will stop by the next day and say, I figured out your problem. And I'm like, nah, I'm sorry, I was just a little late. But at the same time, I'm smiling inside myself saying, this is great. They spent all night in some sense thinking about the problem. They figured out the problem. They know what the answer is. And think of all the increased learning because of answer, asking such a difficult and challenging question. I think the length is also important. Being able to function in a stressful environment is important for anybody in higher ed, and if I give them too short of an exam, they can take as long as they want, but by giving an exam that takes a little bit of time and most people don't finish on time, they've got to do some type of prioritizing within the stressful situation. Now finally, some exams or some topics shouldn't be examined. And so I'm starting to give some type of a take-home portion, things like big models, or rather than ask them to write a half-page essay and see how fast they can crank out an essay, I would much rather say bring a half-page essay to the exam on this, and then I can grade that they had the time to try and build and develop exactly what they wanted, and plus that's extra time they're spending actually learning and developing skills. So those are some of the concepts I use when I'm trying to develop an exam. Now, I actually enjoy creating exams. It takes a lot of thought to try and come up with questions that are answerable but are challenging, and I enjoy that whole concept. But then comes the grading, which is extremely discouraging besides time consuming. You sit there, you're grading the exams, like, I can't believe they missed this and this. And you start realizing all these things that you thought you would taught well, you just didn't actually teach well enough, or at least they didn't understand well enough to do well on the exams. So for this reason, I will personally grade every exam because I want to know where I failed the students and then I can bring that feedback back into the class and I can then help them overcome those problems. But this is why I like midterms better than finals because I still have a chance to get them the core competencies and the other type of knowledge they need before the class is over. By the time the final works out, then I'm stuck trying to send them an email or I'm trying to just change for the next class coming in. Um, as I'm grading, I want to do this as fast as possible. And I find working one page at a time keeps me much more consistent. I know exactly how many points I took off for this type of an error. People tend to make the exact same type of errors. And so you can just cruise really fast if you just go one page at a time. And it makes life a little bit faster. Um, another thing I've heard is as the students walk out of the exam, just hand them the entire exam. Say, do this in any group you want. It's extra, 10 points extra credit. Now everybody goes off, they have the exact same exam, they know exactly what the question was, they have a chance to sit down, they can form groups, they can sit there, and all of a sudden they spend this extra time doing the exam, they all get 100%. If you're gonna do this, you should grade the exam as either 100% correct or 100% wrong on every single problem. And then that way you don't have to get any partial credit, all you're looking for is the answer, and it be graded very fast by TAs and things like that. And that will also help bolster um, learning. 
Now, I personally don't use any multiple choice questions. And the reason why is whenever I see a multiple choice question, I just get in a panic mode. I'm like, ah, oh, it's like the SAT or ACT. It's so stressful. There can only be one right answer. And that doesn't really go along with my idea of learning. And the other problem is, what about partial credit? So I know on the SAT, they have a three or a negative three. And if I miss the minus sign, they'll probably have a third two. And all I have to do is make one tiny little error, and although I'm almost right with the problem, I'm not going to get any points at all. And so I find that in a multiple choice exam, you get either two types of questions. One that is completely trivial because all the other answers are bad, and the other one is that I can't decide between two or three of them. And it literally comes down to a coin flip. This one's right, this one's also right, but this one seems to be the most right. And so you get people that are sitting there trying to debate, and you don't tend to get as accurate of a reflection on the learning, nor do you tend to try and enhance the learning on the backside of the exam either. And it tends to be much more definition-based. And so that's why I personally don't do multiple choice exams. Now, I'm kind of torn about the idea of multiple choice exams. Because I have four different goals when I'm doing my teaching, and one of them is spend less time in my teaching efforts, and the second one is to increase student learning. Obviously, the least amount of time I could do grading would be to try and throw in a multiple choice question. If I have a whole exam of those, I'm done grading almost instantly with Scantron. Personally, I will sacrifice the time to make sure that none of my questions are just circle this, you got to go through, you got to do some work or a short answer, a quick sentence. It does take a little longer for me to grade, but in the end, I think it's better for the students and I'm willing to sacrifice, in this case, a little of my time in order to help the students learn better and help me be a little better of a teacher. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my discussion of exams. I hope you start making better and improved exams and you can use them to help your students learn better. Uh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.